Hi, it's Marty, the Meticulous Hack. Today I'm going to talk about my fake window project that I hacked out a few years back. This is first of all video, shooting video, and if the colors look off on this, that's not the way it looks in person. This actually fools people, they think it's a real window. Um, this was a concept in my head, okay? So this is a concept video, it's not really a how-to. I do show you some steps that I took to get this all this back there, but my situation is going to be a lot different than yours. You're not going to have to contend with this mess, and I'm going to pick up in the steps that I show you. I'm going to bypass all my calculations and and carpentry that I had to do that was horrible for me because I'm not good at that. Um, but uh, this, you know, was a concept that I couldn't find any how-tos on because the how-to. Uh, videos online about a fake window will show you how to put a LED light panel behind it uh, behind a window pane and then you have a daylight temperature glow coming through um, you know that's fine but this is clearly different this is um, a TV s set this is a 24 inch full high def 1080p TV there's there's high def 720 there's there's full high def 1080 which is what we're mostly used to and then 4k would look even better I do an experiment later in the video with 4k playing it on this and uh, you'll see how that turns out but but anyway um, this is being fueled by this uh, Microsoft Surface Pro which is all beat up and stuff but I'm just playing a video through Windows Media Player and uh, it is being projected in 1080p just like the TV the source has to be the same as the destination. It doesn't have to be. You're just not going to get as good a quality out of your TV if your source doesn't project it, uh, doesn't um, you know send it to that uh, to that device as in the same resolution. Uh, does that make sense? This is also something you could use. This is, I mean, Surface Pros are, ch are expensive. So are uh, you know any any kind of Apple product, but. This is uh, called New Vision. I bought this for 50 bucks on, on eBay. For, it's a full version of Windows. And oddly, it also has 1080p resolution and it has a little HDMI, mini HDMI port. You could use a Wi-Fi stick. You could use a Chromecast or a Fire Stick, but that's a whole nother ball of wax and I didn't do it that way. And I guess this is where the meticulous part comes in because to me, that's streaming compressed video and I felt like I could get better resolution if I uh, came out of this with a, I shot this myself by hand. And if I came out of that with uh, the HDMI feeding the TV, right? So I went to uh, a local area and I found um, a little street and I shot it uh, because I wanted something that was kind of mundane that you would see looking out a window, right? And so I turned the camera sideways so that I would get a vertical shot. And that translates into a vertical image once I turn my TV um, on its side like this. Now, it's projecting on the media player this way, horizontally. It would look like that on the TV, too, if I had the TV horizontal in its natural state. I also have uh, uh, some stereo speakers hooked up to this uh, up above the cabinets. It's all powered up above the cabinets. There's some electricity up there. I've got some speakers that are hidden. And it sounds really good. I like it a lot, and I, I just like this system. It works really well for me. But um, there's a lot of ways you can do it. You can do it however you can figure it out, really. Um, uh, also, this is video. There's endless possibilities you could play on it. You could have your friends, you know, peek up in there. I don't know, anything. I play screensavers a lot. I just find they really add an ambiance and they're very beautiful. And so I like that. So I'll show you some of the steps I took to make this happen. And you can decide whether you think it's worth it or not. This is what I started with. It's a prefab uh, window pane, and it was just a rectangular piece that I trimmed it with, uh, I trimmed it around it with some trim, and then I put uh, windowsill material. You could use a real window though. This is just a, a piece I lucked into at a flea market for six bucks, and it, it uh, even luckier than that, it fits my 24-inch TV behind it. So. Anyway, um, I had to cut this groove in the window seal right, right down here uh, to fit around this obnoxious faucet that I have going here. And it's going to sit against the wall uh, like that. 
and the TV is going to be behind it. So anyway, from this point, what I, what I did was uh, I made a frame that goes around it. And see these, the ridges of this, uh, this piece, this, this windowsill? This frame sits right around that, right around that, like, like so. Okay, and I got these holes drilled in this to uh, get air to the TV. Now these holes, they're not uniform, they're a mess. I chewed up my wood on the inside with a dull bit that I was using to drill. And uh, it's, <laughs> but those are not gonna be visible um, because one's gonna be on the top and one's gonna be on this far side over here and nobody's gonna ever see that. So, so anyway, the TV has to breathe. That's, you know, the number one enemy of electronics is heat. Probably should have drilled more holes. All right, so the TV is going to sit on this little ledge that I have and these screws, I'm going to wrap some twine around it. And that's a pretty jerry-rigged process, but uh, it's about all I've come up with so far. Now I've got three screws that are going to secure this frame. They will have to support the weight of the TV. And what I did here is I have, uh, this is really, so manual, it's crazy. But I have this uh, wire, it's a 12 gauge electrical wire with a, a screw taped to it. And this screw head is going to be used as a plunger to turn the TV on and off because the on off button is right here in line with this hole. Um, so, see the wire sticking through now? So anyway, it looks like that. And you know, I mean, come on, that's, like the Flintstones or something, but the only other thing I could do was drill a hole in the front for the remote for the infrared sensor, and that would be a big black hole that I'd have to drill, uh, drill, and I didn't want it to be visible like that. So anyway, this is uh, pretty incognito, so um, I'm, I'm happy with it, it's fine. It works. Here's my 24 inch TV, it's 1080p. And uh, which is unusual for a 24 inch, unless you use a computer monitor and that's fine, as long as it has an HDMI. And here's the on off button that I'm going to be hitting uh, with that little wire. And so it's gonna sit vertically in here. Sits on that little ledge. looking like that. So now I have to uh, secure the back of it. Here it is, I have this nylon string, this heavy nylon string, which is not gonna break. I do just have it in a bow that you would like you tie your shoes, but I've got it crisscrossed and I've got it around these screws that are at uh, each corner. Here they're sticking out. And look, I'll, I'll lean it back a little, as you see. it's it's leaning against the strings and it's okay. All I have to do is keep it secured while I put it up there on the wall and get it down whenever I want to get it down. Uh, once it's up there, it's leaning against the wall and there's no problem. I'm gonna show you my setup here. I've got this uh, ledge that is the TV is going to set on while uh, I hook it at the top. Now, these uh, L brackets are just going to slide in between the TV and the frame. Now, I don't know if you can see this little, the way I have it turned up here at the end, I bent it up on both of them because just being flat, uh, it wasn't good enough. It was, uh, it was sliding off. So, I did that, and then I have corresponding grooves in the, uh, in the window seal uh, where it's going to be hanging and in those uh, grooves those those little flanges will go into the grooves. So that's it uh, I've got the HDMI and the power cord here that goes up into the uh, cabinet above whoops um, There you go the power cords go up through the top there where I have some electricity and I have, uh, I have all that plugged in up here above 
and I'm gonna put a little crown molding up above these cabinets to make sure it hide all those wires. I've also got a string of lights up there too. Okay, there's my power cable and here's my HDMI one. Come on, go in there. Okay. Now we just have to get it up on the wall. See, I have these angles cut right here. That's so I can angle it against the wall and the edges won't get in the way. So that it goes, fits over that faucet. And now the brackets should go right in between the TV and, and the frame. Okay, got a little wire cut, I mean a uh, little uh, a divot cut in the back of the frame so that the wires uh, aren't pressed up against the wall. Move the TV a little in here. Okay. I think that's, is it fitting right? I don't think so. No. It's not fitting right. Oh, please, come on. Ah, there it goes. All right. Huh. It's even almost level. Huh. Okay. All right, so, um, let's see, uh, See if we can get it get it to uh, fire up. Oh, all right, I'm going to turn it on with the little plunger here. There we go. Take a minute to talk about the video process itself. If this is not your cup of tea, then you can find somebody to help you with it very easily. Your nephew, uh, somebody on Craigslist. You can figure it out. I'll help you with it if I can. Um, this is shot with a Sony A7 that some you know years ago at 1080p, and um, as you see, my field of action is framed below the halfway point, so we can see all the cars and everything just fine. Now I thought, well, how would this look in in 4K? Because now I have a 4K camera. And I tried to recreate this scene, went to the same park, and it's more crisp, it's more realistic, I like it. But as you see, my car is gonna be blocked by my, my window frame. So there's a car and it's gonna go that way right behind this crossbar. So that's something you have to keep in mind. And let's pull back and take a look at the bigger picture. I did this four or five years ago and I still get a kick out of it. My friends still like it and I think it was worth it. I was working out of my own thoughts, so it was really difficult for me. Hopefully I've made it a little easier for you if you're interested in doing it. I think I'm gonna take the cross hatch out, the window pane part, and I'm gonna make just a frame around it, the screen. I'm gonna project paintings on it, see what that looks like. Maybe I, I could project a tile mosaic, so now it looks like every other kitchen sink in the world. This was just to cover a junction box. It was, this double switch here was here in front of the sink, like center, you know, right? It's like, who would do that? That's like shoddy construction work. This is the reason I do everything myself. You know, people are pigs. I've got another video coming out about how I did my countertops. I made these by hand. They're terrazzo, which is cement with glass chips embedded. And there's a whole sanding process that goes on with diamond sanding discs. It's a big production. You're not going to do it. You're not going to do this either. You're not listening. Nobody's, I mean, I'm talking into the ether right now. It's what's going on. In fact, if you think you're going to make your own uh, uh, concrete countertops, then just like thunk yourself in the back of the head with a shoe so that you regain consciousness. Pay somebody a hundred bucks a square foot to do it for you 
because you'll be in hell. Uh, you know, little spoiler alert on my, uh, on my kitchen countertop videos. Uh, because these are projects that like when you're doing them, you just like try to rationalize them away. Like, oh, why did I take this on? You know, I, well, at least I'm not in the burn ward. You know, you gotta descend all the way down to the burn ward to make the pain go away. But if by chance one or two of you are still watching at this point, then, you know, God love you. I'll, I'll answer any questions that you have. I'll do the best that I can. So, thanks.